Hello, Matt One Crew. This is Mr. Pratt with your video on how to take your on shape drawing for your butcher block project and bring it into the program called Partworks that we're going to utilize in order to create our uh, code for the CNC machine. So, how the machines operate uh, and create our groove that we, we've designed in on shape. So, uh, without wasting any more time here, uh, I have my on shape drawing and a couple of things to remind you about. The overall size of your project should be 12 inches in length and 8 inches in width, okay? So when I go and look at your project before saving your file from Partworks, I want to see your on-shape drawing to determine did you draw everything correctly uh, and do you have the correct dimensions here? And so that's the first thing I'm going to look for. The next thing I'm also going to look for is do I have the correct amount of space between uh, the edge of my um, design to the line here, which in this case, I don't. Okay, so this is something that I would need to go back and make a correction or change to. Uh, as long as we need to be able to have an inch and a quarter space from the edge of our board to our design so that a clamp would not interfere with the engraving that would happen. So I just want you to be aware of that. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's okay only to continue on with the drawing. Uh, I don't need your dimensions or anything else for your design on the on-shape drawing that you've created. So this is all that you need. When you are done with your drawing, you're going to hit the green check mark. And you're going to right-click on Sketch 2. When you right-click on Sketch 2, you're, or I'm sorry, Sketch 1, might, yours might say, uh, you want to export as a DXF or drawing. Understand that you should only have one sketch over here in this uh, side window. So right click, export as a DXF slash drawing, and you want to give your file a name. And so right now I'm going to change this to Pratt BB on shape. And I wanted the format to be a DXF. I want this version to be uh, release 14 and you have options here when it comes to on shape and taking your file and bringing it into Partworks. Option one, which is the preferred option, is that you open on shape uh, up into uh, the laptops that I provide you in class because the program Partworks is only available on my class set of laptops. So that means that you would just download on shape, your on shape drawing onto the computer that I provide you. Another option is to email the file, uh, and, that, and that's something that would require you then to open your email on uh, the computer that I provide you, download it, and then bring it into Onshape, um, but the, or into Partworks. But the preferred option is going to be to download, uh, so that's what we'll try to do here. So we're going to export this. When we export it, it goes to our Downloads folder. You can see it pops up there. Now, your computers will not be able to open this file. Your, your personal computers. This file can only be opened on my class set of laptops. So from here then, we're going to open up Partworks. And Partworks is a program that we're going to look at a little bit uh, during class time together. And so uh, the program will require you the first time to log into it. And so from there then, we'll be able to open up and, and get you rolling in the program. And so I'm going to give you these plan, the directions to utilize Partworks, um, but I'm going to walk you through in this demonstration as well. So the first thing we're going to do is hit create a new file, and it gives us this job setup on the left side here of our screen. The first thing we need to know is what does width and height mean? All right, so width in this program actually means the length of your board, which in this case is 12 inches. Our height is going to be our width of our board. So we're going to change that to 8 inches. The thickness should be 1 inch. And Z0 should be at the top. So this little red dot should be at the top. Don't click the bottom one. All right. That's not what it should be. It should be at the top. So that means that's where the bit will start the engraving. We want the XY origin position to be the bottom left corner, as you can see here. And make sure that use origin offset is not check marked. Once you have all that in there, you're going to hit OK. And now it gives us our drawing tab over on the left side. It also gives us our workspace. Now we've already created our design, but we need to bring it into the program. And so to bring it into the program, 
what we're going to do is we're going to use the icon called import vectors from a file. So this is in your directions that I provided you. When I do this, I'm going to go to my downloads folder because remember that's where uh, the file from Onshape went when we when we try to download it. So I'm going to click on that and hit open. When I do that, you might get a warning screen. This is okay. You can go ahead and hit yes. You're going to notice that it does not appear in the um, on the entire canvas or workspace that white area, and so we need to move it over without clicking anything on the drawing itself. We're going to use under the align objects the center in material icon that I'm hovering over right now. When I do that, it then brings it into the middle of the canvas. Now the pink line simply means that the object that we drew in on shape is selected. So when I left click off of it, you can see how it's not selected anymore. From here, we're going to go ahead and begin to um, draw or, or create our actual tool paths. If you have questions up to this point, simply stop me in the shop or, or somewhere in the classroom and ask if you are unsure. You can always ask your classmates as well. There is a bottom section to the directions on how to um, join vectors together, meaning the lines. You do not need to do that for this project, but this is something that we will be doing for a, another project in this class. So let's go ahead and move into the creating toolpath section. At this point, we're done with the drawing uh, tab, so we're going to go ahead and unpin this from the screen. It's going to make your canvas bigger, but we're going to open up what's called the toolpath tab, which is on the right side. So if you hover over it, window will appear, and the pin at the top, if you click it, it pins that tab to the screen so it does not uh, disappear on you. And so what we need to do first is select everything that we want to engrave. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw a box around everything. So everything selected shows up pink or that dashed line. The icon that we're going to be using for this, uh, or the toolpath icon that we're going to use for this project is called the Quick Engrave Toolpath. It's a T with lines that go straight through it. When you click on it, this will open up a new window where we are going to set the parameters for that toolpath. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to change the tool, path, the, the tool itself. So if you hit select under the inch tools, it, it probably won't default this for you. It should be the ball nose 0.25, which is the one in your instructions I provided you. The diameter of that bit should be 0.5. So you're going to change that if it does not, because it shouldn't. It should say quarter inch already. So you're going to change that to 0.5 like I have. You also want to change your pass step to 0 0.06. Those are the two numbers that you're going to change in the tool database menu. Once you've done that, I'd like you to go ahead and hit apply. So that's going to save your changes. And you're going to hit OK. After you've done that, you're going to change your depth slash pressure. So this is how deep the engraving will be. We want it to be an eighth inch. So that, that would be 0.125 as you can see in the window there. The other option that we need to select is outline. So what that means is it's going to follow the lines that we drew in the on shape program. And then we're going to click calculate. When we click calculate, it's going to show up with arrows on the screen. Those arrows simply represent the direction that the bit is going to travel. So it would start at the green dot and work its way around following the arrows. And so it would do that until it gets to the correct depth. After you've done that, you can go ahead and hit close. And we can go ahead and preview what this is going to look like on a 3D view. When I go to preview toolpath, this will take me to a new view. You're going to see at the top of the window, the toolpath list. And this is simply showing us what the bit, what the bit will do. So the toolpath that we created. Those red lines or lines that look funky, that's simply telling us where the machine it will start and move to as it as it uh, travels from one section of the engraving to the next. So it's going to engrave, it's going to start at the bottom left corner, it's going to start here and engrave, it's going to then travel to the circle, engrave the circle, then it's going to travel to the next stop, and so on. And so you can see how that's going to look when it's done. In order to actually see what this looks like, you can animate or simulate the motion of the CNC machine. So I like to use the Use Global Field Color so I can see what's being engraved. 
make sure the animate and draw tool are, uh, are check marked and then you can hit preview toolpath when you do this it's going to show what that looks like and then I can use my mouse here my cursor to move this so I can see the depth that it's actually engraving now it looked a lot better in just a, uh, a 2d format right this is kind of showing us that 3d view like I said and so I can see that I really don't like that oval in the middle well, we can go back and we can change that. So let me just put this back into the drawing tab here. I want to just select the oval that I created and I can hit delete. Now, don't think that when you delete that, it's going to just appear directly on the 3D view. You actually have to go back and you have to adjust that engraving, okay, the toolpath that we created. So to do that, you're going to hit edit, recalculate all toolpaths, it's going to show up that it did do that and hit OK. And now we can go back to our preview toolpath icon. Or sorry, the 3D view. We can reset our preview and preview that toolpath one more time. And you can see how that changed. At this point, I would say I'm pretty happy with what I created. So what I would ask from you when you get to this point is that you have your on shape file open. You have your Partworks file open and you have your board cut to the correct size, which is eight by 12. In order for me to save your Partworks file, I need to see those three things. Once we have that, we will then take it over to the CNC machine to create this engraving that you have drawn in the on shape and then simulated in the Partworks um, programs. If you have any questions during the process of creating this project or the designs for this project, simply replay the video or you can read over the instructions that I provide you in the packet for your butcher block project, or you can ask a friend or a classmate. And if you're still stuck, you can then come to me and I will assist you. I hope that this was helpful and that I look forward to seeing your designs as you begin working on your butcher block projects.